Good evening. Once again, Kenny Jacobs from Bloomington, Illinois. Going to do another video tonight talking about current events as it relates to Bible prophecy. And again, there's so much going on that I need to get right into it. Um, and I'm going to cover several news stories as well as get into some scripture. Um, but there's two specific news stories I'm going to talk about tonight. The first one I'm going to share and the last one I'm going to share that really upset me as a Christian, and uh, <clears throat> just more proof that we're living in the last days, but um, it's just getting crazy out there, and uh, the world's just getting more and more evil, and more and more intolerant to the, uh, to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, <clears throat> let's get right into it. Let's talk about this first story. This is... um. Uh, this headline, Satanic Temple to Distribute Materials to School Children in Florida. I'm going to read that again, in case you didn't quite hear that right. Satanic Temple to Distribute Materials to School Children in Florida. The Satanic Temple has announced that it will provide pamphlets on Satanism to students in Florida following the school board's decision permitting the, distri the distribution of of religious materials. Among the materials that are set to be distributed are pamphlets on the philosophy pra and practice of Satanism, the Satanic Temple's tenets. Also, the sect tells school children about their legal rights to choose to practice Satanism, according to the official press release. Earlier this month, the school system made the decision to let any religious and atheist materials be provided in schools. The temple said that although it does not agree with the school board's decision to allow religious materials in schools, it will continue to ensure that pluralism is respected whenever the church-state division is breached. Temple, temple spokesperson Lucian Greaves explains, We think the responsible thing to do is to ensure that these students are given access to a variety of differing religious opinions as opposed to standing idly by while one religious voice dominates the discourse and delivers propaganda to youth. I am quite certain that all of the children in these Florida schools are already aware of the Christian religion and its Bible, and this might be the first exposure these children have to the actual practice of Satanism. We think many students will be very curious to see what we offer, Greaves added. The Satanic Temple came into the media spotlight after announcing it is going to erect a seven-foot uh, Satanic statue next to the uh, Ten Commandment monument at the Oklahoma State Capitol. It also unveiled plans to build a chapel in Detroit. <clears throat> um, <laughs> I wish I could tell you this was a satire, that this was a fake article. But it is not. This is real. This is really happening. It's unbelievable because I, as a Christian, cannot mention the name of Jesus in a school. A teacher got fired for having a Bible sitting on his desk. Students who've, who've tried to mention Jesus or, or in school projects, have been told to sit down and not be able to share things with the class. Yet they can pass out satanic pamphlets to the children. And we wonder why there's things like school shootings going on. We wonder why there's drugs and the crime rate is so ridiculous. And why we have to have metal detectors at the doors when people try to get into schools now. And all of you Satanists who will comment on my channel now, on this video, when you see this. Most Satanists aren't sincere in their faith in Satan, if you want to call it that. They don't really want to worship Satan. They just want to rebel against and mock God. And if you are one of the rare Satanists who really does want to worship Satan, you need to wake up and wake up right now. Satan hates you. He doesn't, want you. He doesn't care about your worship. He hates you. He's just happy to know that at the end of time, you and he are both going to be suffering in a lake of fire for eternity. Satan could care less about you. And for your religious rights, nothing positive comes out of Satanism. So it should not be allowed in the schools, period. 
Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20, Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil, <clears throat> that put darkness for light, and light for darkness, that put, sweet, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Which is exactly what they're doing right here when they're passing out satanic pamphlets because they uh, because the Christian so-called propaganda has always been allowed in schools in the past. This is a country that was founded on Judeo-Christian principles. And there is no such thing as separation of church and state. What the Constitution talked about was the government cannot require you to practice a certain faith. But it wasn't so that we could not practice our faith that we want in school or in public. <clears throat> Spiritual warfare <clears throat> is going to get crazier and crazier right now. Let's go to Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 through 13. Revelation 12, 7 through 13. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. <clears throat> he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. <clears throat> and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. <clears throat> so <clears throat> Satan knows he has a short time, he's going to do everything he can to try to bring on as much wrath and as much havoc as he can throughout the world. Which includes our children at school and our society in general. Let's look at uh, Timothy, Second uh, Timothy three one, and then I want to come back to Revelation real quick and make a point. <clears throat> Excuse me, Second Timothy three one verses one through five. For this know also that in the last times perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, like these Satanists. Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, <clears throat> without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. <clears throat> that describes our end time, the times that we're living in right now very, very well. Excuse me, let's go back to Revelation 12 for a minute, because the last story I'm going to talk about is going to have a little bit to do about Pope Francis again, and, and a sermon he just gave. <clears throat> uh, in Revelation chapter 12, there's a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. <clears throat> and the Catholic Church teaches that that woman is Mary. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> that woman is Israel. And uh, let's go to verse... Uh, Let's see here. Verse 13. Revelation 12, verse 13. I just read it a second ago, but let's read it again. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. And the woman were given, and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into a place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. That is when the Jewish people flee to Petra in the last, in the, the final end of the, uh, re, uh, the final three and a half year period of time during the tribulation period, the great tribulation, when they flee to Petra for protection from the wrath of Satan. If the woman was, was 
Mary, explain verse 13 and 14 to me. If it's that, it is not Mary, it is Israel. Uh, I'm just unreal. All right, let's uh, let's go on. I got a lot of other news stories I do want to cover. Um, let's hope my technology works okay here tonight. Um, I went to uh, three other news stories about Israel and peace, um, <clears throat> and then one about Pope Francis. We'll wrap it up with some scripture. Um, let's go to the Times of Israel today. Delay. Ah, delay in Gaza rebuilding could threaten truce. Now, this is an interesting article because of because who this is about. Tony Blair calls for a substantive lasting change, uniting Gaza and the West Bank and opening Gaza back up to the world. Tony Blair, I think, uh, is somebody that we really need to keep our eye on when it comes to end times, last days, uh, prophetic events, and players that are going to be playing a big role. Tony Blair, the former Prime Minister of uh, Britain, he also has his Faith Foundation, which is an interfaith uh, organization trying to promote the one world religion. And he's been getting more and more involved in the peace deal in the Middle East with Israel. So let's go on and read this article. But keep, we need to keep our eye on him. Let's read this article. The Middle East Quartet of Peacemakers on Wednesday joined um, calls for a quick start to the rebuilding of Gaza before the current truce with Israel ends in renewed violence. The precarious situation in Gaza and southern Israel, the danger that violence could flare up again at any point, are precisely the reason to move as quickly as possible on the short-term and long-term recovery efforts. Uh, Quartet envoy uh, Tony Blair wrote in remarks published by his office ahead of a meeting of, on international aid to the Palestinians. Uh, <clears throat> uh, he said, this is about making substantive, lasting change, uniting Gaza and the West Bank and opening Gaza back up to the world. Uh, Blair's report calls for the West Bank-based Palestinian Authority of President Mahmoud Abbas to take a leading role in Gaza's reconstruction with the comprehensive support of the international community. He welcomed Tuesday's announcement that Israel and the Palestinians had accepted a UN-brokered deal on delivering construction materials to Gaza that would ensure that they would not be diverted by Hamas militants. Uh, I'm going to post this into the uh, description box, but again, just keep just keep your eye out because Tony Blair keeps getting involved more and more, and he seems to be promoting or excuse me favoring the Palestinian side in all of these discussions. Um, but it's just odd to me that he's getting involved as much as he is in the peace negotiations and the peace deal, and he has his faith foundation, which is similar to what uh, Pope Francis is trying to do with, with Shimon Perez and their UN of Religions. Wow, things are moving fast. I'm telling you, this is unbelievable. Uh, let's go to the Jerusalem Post real quick for a couple of articles. Uh, first one, we keep hearing a lot about international coalitions. Well, here's another one that uh, Mahmoud Abbas is calling for, and I'm waiting for this to load. I'm sorry for the delay. Come on. The article headline is... <clears throat> Come on. PA calls for international coalition to end Israeli occupation. Israel was given that land by God. It is their land. Period. Well, let's go on. Call comes in, in response to U.S.-led coalition against Islamic State terrorist organization in Iraq and Syria. The Palestinian Authority on Tuesday called for an international coalition to end Israeli occupation. The call came in response to the U.S.-led coalition against the Islamic State terrorist organization in Iraq and Syria. PA spokesman Nabal Abu uh, Rudine said as long as that coalition's goal is to fight terrorism, what is needed first is an international coalition to end Israeli occupation. 
Without this, the region will face more chaos and disintegration. Earlier this week, the PA leadership voiced concern that the war on Islamic State would divert attention from the Palestinian issue. Uh, PA President Mahmoud Abbas is quoted on Tuesday saying that he was determined to proceed with his new plan to establish an independent Palestinian state on the pre-1967 lines within three years. Addressing Palestinians in Tolkarm or on the 32nd anniversary of the Sabra and Shaltila massacres in Lebanon, Abbas pledged to go to the UN to achieve his goal. We are going to the United Nations as one of the methods to achieve our goals, he said. Abbas predicted there would be some parties that would try to prevent the Palestinians from going to the UN and seeking membership in various international organizations, hinting at the likelihood that the U.S. would veto such a move at the UN Security Council. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's go now. Robert Sari, UN Special Envoy to the Peace Process, said that, said that Palestinians had begun discussing a broader initiative with the, with the Security Council, but he did not offer information about the proposal. Sari did say, however, that it was important to link what his organization was doing in Gaza with the larger peace process, because the conflict between Gaza and Israel can only be solved by a larger agreement for a two-state solution. An Israeli official said the Palestinians understood that the only path to a two-state solution was through negotiations. Uh, we're going to force Israel to divide the land, and God is going to divide our land. Judgment is coming to America. Uh, let's go on to another article, because this was also about the peace process. And this is interesting, because this is about what the Israeli people feel about it. And this is a sad, uh, sad article because they just don't get it. Um, here we go, out of the Jerusalem Post. Study. Israelis feel their global status depends on peace with Palestinians. Uh, in this, in this uh, study, only 13% des uh, described the country's international standing as good. Israelis believe their global standing is dependent on peace with the Palestinians and that the U.S. is the country's most important ally. According to a new study to be released uh, Wednesday morning uh, by an Israeli think tank, only 13% of the 500 people polled on September 9-11 believed that Israel's global standing was good, while 35% thought it was poor. According to 45%, Operation Protective Edge in Gaza damaged Israel's foreign relations. 61% of the respondents felt that progress in the peace process would improve Israel's foreign relations. 50% said they did not want Israel to negotiate with the new Palestinian consensus government, backed by both Fatah and Hamas, while 45% said they did. Uh, The findings come amid a frozen peace process with the Palestinians and at a time when Israeli relationships, relations excuse me, with, the, with the United States appear to be strained. When asked to choose the three most important countries for Israel, 95% mentioned the U.S., 33% cited Russia, 32% mentioned Germany, 27% cited Egypt, an identical percentage mentioned the United Kingdom, only 2-4% to mentioned the Palestinian Authority, Jordan or Turkey as being among the three most important countries for Israel. Uh, the findings of the poll show there is fertile ground for regional peace um, and that they're working on a proposal to advance such a plan to achieve this. Uh, that's enough of that. But first of all, the poor Israeli people—they want peace so bad. And how can and can you blame them when they constantly live in fear of terrorist attacks and having rockets fired at them, and they're surrounded by Muslim nations, radical jihadists that want to take make Psalm 83 come true. They want to wipe Israel off the map, that the name of Israel will be no more in remembrance. And then, yes, we are their most important ally. But because of Barack Hussein Obama, the Muslim in our White House. We are turning on Israel 
and aren't standing behind them like we used to. No, we have not turned against them completely yet. But it's going to happen, and you can see it happening right now. And these poor Israeli people, they can go to a two-state solution. They can give up as much land as... It, they can give up all their land. It doesn't matter. They still... The, the, the Palestinians the, and the, the, the Arabs in the Middle East will still not want to live in peace with the Jewish people. They will still want to completely destroy them. Giving up peace for land, or land for peace, excuse me, like they did with the Oslo Accords, did not help. It will not help. You cannot negotiate with radical Muslim terrorists who want to kill you. It's that simple. Unfortunately, the Israeli people and the, and the global community, and unfortunately the United States, are going to force Israel into this two-state solution under the guise of peace. The Antichrist will rise. He will confirm the covenant with many. And the countdown will, return, well, will begin for Armageddon, the second coming of Jesus Christ. And we are so close, guys. It is absolutely imperative that you are ready. Uh, I have one more news story. And another one of these stories that I just, you know, I just... As a Christian, I can't believe this. Now, there are Catholics who are going to probably agree with this. But, um, you know, this is a controversial subject when you go from Protestant to Catholic discussions here. But um, here we go. Out of International Business Times Faith and Belief section, Pope Francis supposedly claimed Virgin Mary is second trinity at Godhead level. Uh, I'm going to continue to research this more and more over the next few days and keep you updated if I can find more information about this. But let's read this article on International Business Times. Pope Francis, with his open-mindedness and more humanist approach to Catholicism, reportedly promoted that the Virgin Mary should be at the Second Holy Trinity, even, even putting her at Godhead level. Pope Francis recently attended the morning mass for the Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows on September 15th at Casa Santa Marta. He preached on how the Virgin Mary learned, obeyed, and suffered at the foot of the cross, according to Vatican Radio. Even the mother, the new Eve, as Paul himself calls her, in order to participate in her son's journey, learned, suffered, and obeyed, and thus she becomes mother, Pope Francis said. The, the, the Pope further added that Mary is the anointed mother. Pope Francis said that the Virgin Mary is one with the church. Without her, Jesus Christ would not have been born and introduced into Christian lives. Without the Virgin Mary, there would be no mother church. I'm going to continue reading, but i got to stop right there for a second. Yes, Mary was the mother of the man Jesus Christ. Without a human mother, Jesus Christ could not have been born to save the world from their sins by his death and resurrection. Absolutely, Mary is a blessed woman. She got to be the mother of Jesus Christ, the man. And uh, and, and that's, she was obviously a great woman of God, and, and a great follower of Jesus Christ and, and of God. She was not and is not at Godhead level. She is not any part of your salvation. Jesus Christ himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. The Bible says there is one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus. Let's continue on. Without the church we cannot go forward, the Pope added during a sermon. Now the end begins, claims Pope Francis's reflection on the Virgin Mary suggests people's hope is not Jesus Christ, but the Mother Church. And I would have to second that 100%. I can't even tell you how many times I've heard Pope Francis refer to the Mother Church and talk about that's where your salvation is. The site claims the sermon somehow indicates a change in the position that Jesus holds in the Holy Trinity. Jesus has reportedly been demoted to the Third Trinity, while the Virgin Mary and the Holy Mother Church, the Roman Catholic Church, takes over his place at the Second Trinity. 
Additionally, basing on Pope Francis's words, he may have supposedly even put the status of Blessed Virgin Mary at the Godhead level. Revelation 17, 4 through 6, according to the site, gives meaning to the Pope's reflection. The chapter tells the story of the Apostle John and his great admiration for the Virgin Mary. Now the end begins, claims the verses, also speaks about the Holy Mother Church and how God thinks of the Holy Roman Mother Church. However, the Bible seems to contradict Pope Francis' promotion of the Virgin Mary to Second Trinity. The site quoted some passages wherein the blessed hope of the Christians is the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. There are reportedly never any mention of the Virgin Mary as, as being any kind of hope to anyone or anything. But during the Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows, Pope Francis added, excuse me, ended his reflection with the assurance of hope from the Virgin Mary and the Mother Church. Today we can go forward with the hope, the hope that our Mother Mary, steadfast at the cross, and our Holy Mother, the hierarchical church, give us, he said. However, the Bible's passages shouldn't be taken literally, especially when it comes to reflections of the Virgin Mary and Jesus Christ. I, I don't even know what to say to that. But, you know, again, if you're a Catholic, just put your faith in Jesus Christ. If you want to be a Catholic, you can be, you know, be a Catholic. That's fine. There are saved Catholics around the world. But if you're saved as a Catholic, you're saved because you put your faith in Jesus Christ and Him alone, and you're not trusting your membership in the so-called Mother Church for your salvation. And you're definitely not trusting in Mary for your salvation. Put your faith in Jesus Christ alone and make your salvation assured by going straight to Him and asking Him to save you and repenting of your sin. After all those news stories, I want to get into the Word real quick um, because that's just... Uh, Alright, let's, let's get on with it. Let's look at the Word of God. Not the catechisms and not the papal decrees and the uh, doctrines of men. Let's look at what the Word of God says. Let's go to Philipp and, and one of my favorite books in the Bible, and it's always an encouragement. Uh, I don't know um, if you guys feel the same way I do, but it seems like it's getting harder and harder to get by in life, especially in the last days. Things are just getting harder. Things are getting more difficult. The economy's bad. And it's pretty easy to get depressed if you're not careful. Um, but if you have the joy of the Lord, you can handle anything. And, and, and I love to read the epistles of Paul because Paul was beaten with rods repeatedly several times. He was in chains and in prison all the time for his, for his faith in Jesus. He was stoned. They thought they, they stoned him to death, but he survived. He was shipwrecked. He was bitten by a poisonous viper. All in the name of Jesus, serving Jesus Christ, and then eventually he was beheaded. But, but as he wrote all of his epistles, he never complained, he never griped, he never felt sorry for himself. He always had the joy of the Lord. And I can tell you that no matter what trial or tribulation I'm facing, the joy of the Lord is my strength. So let's read a couple of, uh, some, a few verses here from Philippians, and hopefully it'll help... Uh, cheer all of you up as well and encourage all of you. Uh, Philippians 2, 1 to 12. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye may be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through, st through strife or vainglory, but in lowly lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being born in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man." Let me stop there again, because let's go back to the Pope article. Jesus is equal to God. He is the, the Trinity, the God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They're all one, they're all equal. And there's no one else. No other people we're adding to this Trinity or to this Godhead. Those are the ones exclusively, nobody else. 
And if you go down here in verse 7, it said, but he, met, he but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. That's why Mary, we had to have Mary. Mary had to have, Jesus had to have a human mother. And let's go on. And being, verse 8, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the, of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That brings me to another point. Pope Francis recently said it is dangerous to think that you can have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Christianity is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That's why we're told right here, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Finally, with all the uh, nutty, crazy things going on in the world, um, let's finish up here with uh, some in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Like That's my prayer for all of us, that we focus on that. Focus on your faith. Get out of this world and put your faith and trust solely in Jesus Christ. And do not live for this world right now. First John says, friendship with the world is enmity with God. Jesus Christ is returning soon, and the last thing you want is to be at enmity with with God. The world offers nothing. It's temporary and it's and it's it's going away soon. The days of this earth are numbered. Uh, let's look at Philippians four, eleven through thirteen. Now that I speak in respect of want I, I love this part. I, I love this these verses right here and I try to remember this every day with the things I'm going through in my own life right now. Not that I speak in respect of, of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therefore, to be content. I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all, in, in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. That is my prayer for all of us, all of you who subscribe to my channel, and all of you who just come across this video. I pray that you'll put your faith in Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ alone. Get in His Word. The joy of the Lord will be your strength. And work out your own salvation through faith in our Savior, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And make sure you are ready. All the signs that Jesus Christ told us to look for are here. Time is short as return is soon. Keep looking up. God bless everyone.